Hi, I'm Chris Thompson for Investor Intel. And today we're talking with Peter Cashin, who is the president and CEO of Imperial Mining Group. How are you, how are you today, Peter? Good, Chris. How about yourself? I'm great. A happy new year. And today we're talking about your PEA stage Scandium project in Quebec, which uh, has a 25 year, I guess, minimum uh, stage life, depending on the existing resource. Uh, and scandium is one of those critical minerals uh, in Canada, in the U.S., and in, in the EU, which are important uh, today. What is scandium actually used for? Well, the main purpose of scandium is it's a very effective alloy agent to aluminum. And, and uh, uh, by adding very, very small quantities of the oxide in your aluminum metal production, you can increase the uh, strength of the alloys up to eight times or 800%. So recently, you've had a lot of good exploration results. Can you give us a quick summary? Yeah, sure, Chris. Um, we The reason of the program was to take the results we had from our uh, 2001 resource report and uh, convert the inferred resource part of the, uh, the total resource into indicated, which is a requirement when you move to, to feasibility study. So we did that work. Um, a lot of the holes were actually at the lower part, uh, lower extension of the zone, basically right at the limit of the pitch shell that we established in our PEA. And it's showing not only wider thicknesses, uh, larger thicknesses, but increase in grades. Now, that being said, um, we recognize that um, as we go to the south, that higher grade, thicker, higher grade section seems to be plunging up to closer towards surface. So. I think future work that we're looking at is to uh, do a bit of near surface exploration to define some of that higher grade mineralization in the early years of the mining life. Otherwise, the material that we've defined at the lower section, we won't even look at till year 2025, something in that area. And by finding that higher grade material closer to surface, how does that affect the economics of the project? Uh, vastly improved because really, um, you want that higher grade plum closer to the surface in the early years of uh, of your mining operation to accelerate uh, capital payback and and uh, lower your your op operating costs. You you'll be mining a lot less material to get your your uh, inferred uh, production rate. And in the PEA, what was the economics at that time? Um, that actually, that's a good point. It's the, uh, it was a 25 year mining life, um, uh, producing about 88 tons of scandium oxide per year, which is not really all that much, but it's really used for making the aluminum alloy I was telling you about. Um, that is, uh, the net present value after tax at a, at a 10% discount rate is $1.72 billion Canadian. And the internal rate of return right now is about 35% after tax. Um, but that was before we had uh, with, we're working on, continue to work on our process flow sheet. And we improved the recoveries that were used in the PEA by about 10%. So that'll positively affect the economics that were portrayed in the PEA. Uh, we haven't worked on that now. Obviously that, that uh, increase in the recoveries will be used in the feasibility study report itself. So um, that's what you want to see. You want to see an improvement in grade uh, in the recoveries in your process because uh, you know you're going to be mining a lot less material to get your notional production rate. Uh, so it's pretty exciting. And when are you aiming to have the feasibility done? Well, we're starting that up. So there's multiple things that we're looking at in 2023. Um, we're just about to finish our our, our process flow sheet. Um, we've we submitted it was uh, it was uh, protected by a provisional U.S. patent. Um, now we uh, submitted our final patent, and we should have that within the next four to six months. Um, so that that information will be now used in the engineering for the pilot plant. So that's one of the first steps that we intend to do in 2023. Uh, we're, we've already started our data collection for the environmental baseline study, which is a requirement to move to feasibility. And then we're hoping that we can get the, the, the feasibility study uh, started up at least in the second half of 2023. Excellent. 
I saw also that you did uh, recent financing. Can you just go over which uh, who came on board? It looked like a pretty exciting time. Yeah, we it was a, it wasn't a large financing. It was about a um, about rate seven hundred thousand in in flow, but we've got about three hundred thousand in in hard dollars as well. Um, the intent there really is to do a small provisional financing. I mean, our finance, our capital needs are much higher than that. But I mean, uh, all mining companies are were negatively affected by this uh, this the market collapse. So I was trying to be responsible and you know bringing enough money to at least have the seed capital necessary to start all of our various steps moving forward. Uh, and hopefully with an improvement in the market conditions, an improvement in our share price market cap, then probably go after a much larger fi financing down the road. But you also had uh, involvement from uh, the Septil Economic Development Corp. So that's a good sign. Yeah, they, you know, they've been really good partners so far. The intent there is uh, the Economic Development Corp set up meetings with uh, business, indigenous, and municipal leaders. Um, generally, Satil has traditionally been an iron mining and, and production center. Um, unfortunately, most of the uh, government R&D capital and, and incentives are for critical minerals, and, and they felt kind of left out because they, they wouldn't qualify for, for that. They view that our project is will allow them to get into that, you know, that transition, the energy transition, and get involvement with uh, the critical mineral space. So, you know, and, and gain the profile as being a center for critical minerals as well. So very exciting. I mean, we met leaders from, uh, there's a large aluminum plant there. Uh, they're very enthused. Apparently they, uh, as one of the provisos to, uh, by the Quebec government to finance uh, an expansion of the plant from about 350,000 tons of aluminum to 600,000 was to get involved with the downstream get uh, uh, an aspect of your business plan involved with uh, value-added uh, metals such as uh, scanning aluminum alloy. Well, Quebec is widely known for its aluminum uh, plants there. So it's a it's a natural fit. And, and Quebec is is leading in the critical minerals and, and, and battery metals, you know, space for, for investing. So um, are you finding that you're getting a good support from other parts of the Quebec government? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've uh, uh, the optimization work we did with our our uh, metallurgical flow sheet was partially sponsored by the Quebec government, about a quarter million dollar grant. Um, we've just submitted a, a subsequent grant to help us to now uh, to move through the pilot plant work, and that's for about five hundred thousand um, dollars. Basically, they've been very prudent in their approach in supporting critical minerals. Um, uh, they're not going to support uh, the exploration development of all 16 rare earths and all of the other, you know, I think there's about 50 uh, critical minerals on the U.S. and Can Canadian list. Um, what they want to do is they said, well, we'll support the, those critical minerals that have natural synergies with our existing uh, existing aspects of, of our economy. And obviously, scandium being an, an additive to aluminum and aluminum being an extremely important a sector for the Quebec government, it was natural. There was a natural fit there, like you said. And where will the pilot plant go? Uh, that's uh, in discussions. There, I think for the the pilot plant for the metallurgical front end, at least the mineral processing and and getting the scandium out of the rock and as an oxide, will will likely be done done in southern Quebec somewhere or uh, at a commercial lab, but. Uh, in our discussions with uh, Alouette Aluminum, which is the aluminum plant there, they've actually got about 18 test um, uh, circuits uh, for aluminum metal production that potentially we could partner with them and uh, do the various R&D that we need to produce, you know, ensure that we've got, we maximize our ability to create an alloy. And then uh, the the secondary benefit there is that if we could align ourselves with them on a toll basis um, for them to, to produce the alloys, we could probably knock off about 100, 100 to $150 million off the CapEx, CapEx that we reported in our PEA. So, I mean, there'll be some economic benefits there, mutual benefits, I would say, to produce the specialty alloys. Uh, that's quite exciting. Now, you mentioned a couple of things already about what was in store for 2023, but why don't you give a little bit of a recap 
you seem to have a lot going on from exploration to uh, you know the feasibility work. So what are sort of the top five things that you're going to that the investors will be seeing this year as part of your news release flow? Well, uh, startup of our pilot plant, exploration drilling, and that uh, to try to define the higher grade surface resource to the south of our existing resource. Um, we want to really get actively involved with our environmental baseline, both at the mining site as well as the uh, the process site that will be in Satil, and that's for the process plant. And then second half of the year, uh, move towards uh, uh, the startup, the feasibility study. So exciting times for uh, Imperial Mining. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a big year. That's great. Well, thanks for the update. I was talking with Peter Cashin, who is the president and CEO of Imperial Mining Group, uh, on the TSXV with ticker IPG. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Chris.